Hello, you're welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And mine is Umaru Sanda Amadu. Coming up. MP for Shaman issues 48-hour ultimatum to the Electoral Commission to restore names of some 7,000 prospective voters he claims were removed from the register. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission says his claims are false. We seek the EC to restore the difference of 7,000 names uh, that is still missing from the register or else face the wrath of the people of Ashama. Meanwhile, day two of the vote exhibition exercise records low turnout. Mm, today is actually a free day, but it's a day for rest. So I don't intend to go there. I have not been there. I don't know if in registering there was this long queue. I don't know if there is going to be a queue. So that is how come I'm finding it a challenge for me to go there. And on constituency radar today, we'll take you to the Nantong constituency in the northern region where residents of the constituency are threatening to boycott this year's elections over the continuous non-fulfillment of promises. Whether we we'll vote or we will not vote, they, they come and lie to us a lot and we decide we will not vote again because we are not seeing any changes in terms of the electricity and the roads and, and then pipes, we have pipe problem. And later, some assembly members in the Bono region are the latest to join growing number of assembly members urging NDC flag bearer John Mahama to ensure his promise to remunerate them with not less than a thousand cities when elected as president in 2020, is adhered to. <laughs> Let's bring you details of our stories and the Member of Parliament for Ashama Ernest Norgbe has issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the Electoral Commission to restore the names of some 7,000 prospective voters he claims were removed from the register. He accused the EC of deliberately removing such names from the register to disenfranchise some of his constituents. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission has debunked the claims. The Ashaman MP, Ernest Henry Nogbe, said he discovered the omission of the names when he showed up at the verification exercise on Friday. According to him, this is a deliberate attempt by the Electoral Commission to disenfranchise some persons perceived to be supporters of the opposition National Democratic Congress. The Ashaman MP, who said over 21,000 names were eliminated from the register, claims majority of them are notness and averse. He states that even his name was eliminated from the register. He, however, said the EC, as of Saturday morning, has restored his name together with some 14,000 names. He has thus sent a strong signal for the remaining 7,000 names to be restored within 48 hours or face the wrath of the people of Ashaman. He said this at a press conference at Ashaman. I my figure yesterday when I raised the concerns. But in less than 24 hours, they have managed to restore about 14,000 names, including myself. Including myself. Yes. Where did they get, where did they get the names of the 14,000 people? That is the question we should be asking the Electoral Commission. If as at yesterday, the, the register was short of uh, 21,000, and this morning, they quickly restore 14,000 people, then we should be asking the Electoral Commission some questions. We seek the EC to restore the difference of 7,000 names uh, that is still missing from the register or else face the wrath of the people of Hashem. We shall occupy the District Electoral Commission office to get the anomaly resolved till the last person, the last person's name is restored. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission disputed the claims. 
snapshots of the provisional register from the Ashaman constituency provided to City News by the EC show the name of the member of parliament, his photograph and other registration details. The Director of Public Affairs of the Electoral Commission, Sylvia Anno, says she doubts the alleged figures. However, there are processes in place to address such anomalies. So I'd rather we deal with these issues individually. Now, if, as an individual, if you went to the exhibition centre to check your details and you realise that your name, you have registered generally and your name is not on the voters list and your name is not on the inception list or the multiple list, you can call for an inclusion form. So I'd rather we handle these issues individually. We started the exhibition only yesterday, and like you rightfully said, we are mentioning a very huge figure, 21,000. So let those individuals go to the centers if they went and they were denied to be given inclusion forms if their names are not on the exception list or the multiple list for them to be included on the voters uh, register. Now the essence of the exercise is to make sure that we correct all the normal. So these things are welcome. And while there's a likelihood of low voter turnout in the Nanton constituency of the northern region in this year's polls, now this is because some residents of the constituency have served notice they will not vote over what they say is the continuous non-fulfillment of promises of road, construction, education and health. City News' Anna Seydou has more. The Nanton constituency of the northern region was part of the then Savligu Nanton district before it was carved out as a district on its own in 2018. The inhabitants are mainly farmers. The NDC has dominated parliamentary elections in the Nanton constituency since 1992. Alhaji Alhassan Yakubu represented Nanton in parliament on the ticket of the NDC for 16 years before he was defeated in the 2008 elections by the MPP's Alhaji Abdul Karim. With former Deputy Trade Minister Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed as candidate, the NDC reclaimed the seat in 2012. He, however, lost to the current MP of Nantong, Mohamed Hadi Tuferu, with about a 900 vote margin. Will the NDC reclaim the lost glory in the constituency, or it will be another victory for the MPP? I was there when your mama was ruling. The same thing when Nanado is ruling. Comparing two of them to me, Nanado is the best candidate to go for. Yeah, because he has done a, he has done a lot for this country. Mm, honestly what are speaking, you think the government has done for this? Uh, well, for, uh, the first and foremost is the free SHS. Uh, and for, for us, for me in particular, because we are in Nantong, uh, when, uh, when your mama was in power, we, we've done a lot, we've done all that we can to have our own district, but we were not given. But Nanado has given us the district. In fact, it's one of the most important things that I would consider and go for him. Yeah, for this. Oh, as for the MP there, he's number one. Since me, since I start voting, this MP is number one. What has he done? He has done a lot. He has done a lot. In my community, he's, he has just put up a building. They are still doing it. He has given us a KG. It's very, very good. If you go to, uh, uh, as for uh, one, really one dumps there, you can't count it. There are many. All is as a result of it. Even this district we are talking about. He's a, he, he, has, he has been the front uh, run of it. Twelve individuals settle on their choices for president and MP, the constituents have collectively identified a common enemy. From here linking to Savilgo, the road is very, very bad. Especially when it is this raining time, when it rains, you can't follow the road from here to Savilgo. In fact, all of the road connecting here to the village, all the villages, is not all that good. We have our major road that we've been complaining several years. Several governments come, go, come, go, but still, we are still facing the same problem. And I believe maybe when you are coming, you meet some of the rules. From here to Tamale, Nanton to Tamale, when you are coming, the road is very bad. You tend to Nanton to Savalu, the same thing. Nanton to Gushawu, the same problem. And we have been crying all that time. But the 
you know, government in power never listening to our cries. So we, we are pleading to them. They should try and then look into our aid and see how best they can solve that challenge for us. Looking at our road, it's very bad from here to Savulugu. In fact, when we were with Savulugu Nanton district, the road was very bad and now it has been splitted. Still, the road has not been maintained. And from Tamale to Nanton, it's almost the same thing. And nobody is listening to us. We've been talking, talking, talking all the time and nobody is listening to us. Even when you look at the road, it has been worked for some time, but still, the work there has not been successful. But there are other key issues that will influence the choices of the people in the 2020 elections. The health sector is very poor. Like if, 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 if I can see, when you go to the, health, uh, the, the clinic, you feel pity for that. Even when, when it's about time we send a pregnant woman there to, to deliver, to give birth, you get it difficult. Like, even government has uh, purchased us uh, ambulances. But here, the ambulance, you, you, you see that the ambulance has no use for us. It doesn't come. It doesn't, it doesn't come. It doesn't come. We, we see it here, yeah. but it's not working. Oh, wow. The new ambulance? The new ambulance is there, but it's not working, and we don't know why. Oh, wow. Like sometimes when we go to the hospital and it's complaining that we should get a transfer, we only go to our chief palace, the Natona Haduna, the current chief for the Natona. He normally used to give us car you know, to convince the patients to Savlu or Tamal Hospital for further treatment. So that's a, we have it, serious challenges about that, the health sector. We have a clinic problem because Natona community here, we have a clinic, we don't have hospital. We should, go, we, like, we should have gone to one by now. But up till now, we don't have, right now, if you go to the clinic and you happen, they happen to conduct any check on you, they will have to try, like, refer you to any maybe medical uh, store to buy medicine for yourself. They can't like, get proper medicine for you in there. And you know, Nathan community is not just like a small community you can see. At least by now, when you go there with your problem, they should be able to get you, you know, some medicine that can help you. Our, our secondary school, the Nanton is very big, and the surrounding communities are many. We don't have secondary school here. So everybody is here. We move to Tamale and other places to attend secondary school. We need a secondary school in the community, in, in Nanton Consensi, at least one. What will be the net impact of these developmental challenges on the 2020 election? Voter apathy is gradually creeping in. Because we are yet to see whether we will vote or will not vote because, because as I say whether we will vote or will not vote, they, they come and lie to us a lot and we decide we will not vote again because we are not seeing any changes in terms of the electricity and the roads and, and then pipes too, we have pipe problem. The, when you see the pipe, the pipe, a pipe is here, there is no water, the pipe is not flowing at all. It's just the, when a woman, the, our women are going to the dam side and when you go to the dam, there is no even water there. We are, we, are, we are just colliding with the animals there in the dams to, to, to drink the water. So that is our problem we are facing in this town. People will not vote. Even, it's, it will be only few people who will come and vote. Now we are, <laughs> but it will not be easy for them to, you know, convince the people to come out and vote. Because they are also now understanding things. You understand? It's not like the other days. Now, 
You know, we are in democratic or uh, civilization. You know, they understand things too. As an MP, they are all aware that MP is supposed to do this, MP is supposed to do that, and they are not doing it. Meanwhile, the assembly member for Wanzama 4 electoral area says the community leadership has commenced massive public sensitization of constituents on their stance. Actually, for me, I would tell them to go and vote because without voting, you can't get what you want. By voting, you have something to say. But if you don't vote, who are you going to blame? So that's why I say for me, they will vote. Are you doing something about it? Are you talking to them? Or are you going into meetings with them to educate them on why they shouldn't take that position? Well, we have been talking to some of our mothers and our brothers to come out and vote. Apart from the lack of a senior high school in this district, lack of electricity in certain communities, poor health care delivery, some residents here say they will not participate in the 2020 election because they have been deceived over the years by politicians. They want these rules and others fixed before the 2020 elections. For City News, I am Anna Seidu reporting from the Nantong constituency. Now day two of the ongoing vote exhibition exercise continues to record low. Friday, September 18 will end on Friday, September 25. The exercise is to allow registered persons confirm their details and fraud it in the voter register to be used for the 2020 election. City News is quickly do engage some pers prospective electors in a crowd why they are yet to verify their details. Have you been able to go and check up? You know? Oh, not yet. Not why yet. is there any reason? Mm, I have a, a very busy schedule, so I've not been able to go and check if my name is duly in the register. Okay, so now it's going to span for like um, one week. Do you intend going to check up? Looking at how busy I am, if I, if I should get a free day, I'll try and do it. Okay. Now, talking of freedom, today is a Saturday, isn't it a free day for you? <laughs> or, 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 or you're thinking of any other free day? Do you have any free day? Mm, today is actually a free day, but it's a day for rest. So I don't intend to go there. I have not been there. I don't know if in registering there was this long queue. I don't know if there is going to be a queue. So that is how come I'm finding it a challenge for me to go there. Yes. But would you, would you find maybe tomorrow or someday to go and check? I don't think I, I, I don't think I want to go because once I've registered, I feel like it's captured. Yeah. But what if um, you go and then your details are not correct? Maybe during the elections itself. <laughs> it looks like you are pushing me. Personally, I don't want to vote. Personally, I don't want to vote. Uh huh. So I just need a card for me to be able to do certain things that I want to do. That is how come I did the card, not to go on the post and go and vote on that day. Where did you register? Um, I went to Baju Yasin. Yeah, okay. I went to West District. Yeah, I went to Senior District, yeah. Okay. And have you been able to go and vote? I've done that. I'm here to go and then, yeah, check. Why is there any particular reason? Um, not really, not really. Because of the, the, the length of the time, that is why. Um, but I'll, go, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that, yeah. I, I, I would want to know, when exactly are you thinking of doing it? Um, from next week. From next week, yeah. Okay. So any day in next yeah, week? Any day. But probably maybe Monday. Say that Afenia, DA Basic School. Is that where you stay? Or? Yeah, my parents stay there. Okay. So uh, have you thought of going to check if your details are yeah, but for now, before I'll go there, I think the duration might elapse. So I don't think I'll be able to go. Yeah. Why? Are you here to school or to work or something? That will take a bit time. Work, work. Yeah. Okay. But, but we have one whole week. Don't you think you can make time to go and just check and come? Mm, weekends, I do week, um, weekends course at ICA, so I can't go there every we can play. These are some reasons for which many prospective voters are yet to verify their details.
Alternatively, the Electoral Commission has allowed people to test their voter ID card number to the short code 1422 at a fee for the verification. However, some persons are doubtful that the short code works. Samson Latte is one of such persons. Now we have a short code. Would you think of using that one, brother? Yeah, I thought of it, but a friend said he used it and he didn't get the feedback. So that discouraged me. But I think I'll try that one and see how it will go. But in case you try that one and then you don't get the feedback, as he also said, would you try and go there? At least maybe, because it's, it's a whole week. Maybe you can get just a day, maybe tomorrow to go and check. For now, because of my shadows, before I'll go there, the duration will elapse. So going there is not an option for me. I'm rather thinking of the short code. On day one of the exercise, the number of persons seeking verification was low, and on Saturday, the situation was no different. So whereas some prospective voters look unperturbed about the whole process, others who spoke to the news team have also indicated that they will make time to visit the various centres to verify their details. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission is also admonishing all eligible voters to either visit the various centres or to use the short code to verify their details. Reporting for City News, my name is Kweku Ediyama Ansa. A group of assembly members in the Bono East region are asking the National Democratic Congress's flag bearer John Mahama to make good on his promise to pay assembly members in his first year of administration when he's voted into power. According to the group, the salaries must be paid on time to enhance their duties as assembly members. Now they made the appeal during an engagement with the flag bearer. Flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, promised to remunerate assembly members with no less than a thousand Ghana cities when elected as the president in the 2020 polls. He indicated that assembly members play a critical role in the governance system. However, they do not get any reward for their activities, hence his proposal. During an engagement with the concerned assembly members in the Bono East region, the group requested for early disbursement of the allowances when voted for in the 2020 elections. <laughs> Leader of the NDC, John Mahama, assured that the party will increase the District Assembly's common fund to 7% to provide enough money for the local government to undertake its developmental projects. One of the key things that we have said, which is even more important than paying allowances to you, is that we're going to raise the District Assembly's common fund back to 7.5% so that you have more money coming to... <laughs> You have more money coming to the districts so that when you are budgeting and you go and lobby and you want a place of convenience, you want a, a chips compound, you want so-so and so in your uh, constituency, then the district assembly is better able to be able to uh, uh, carry out such projects. He added that this comes with a responsibility for the assembly members to collect data of bets and deaths recorded in the local assembly to enable government to efficiently formulate developmental policies for local government areas. You have even a phone, a smartphone, they put the application on it and it has the space for name of child, name of father, name of mother, uh, place of birth, time of birth and all the other things. And so anybody who has a child goes to the local counselor, he fills in the name and everything on the application. And then when he finishes filling in, there's a button that says send. So he just presses send and it goes automatically into the database of the district births and deaths. And it also automatically updates the national births and deaths registry. And so if we adopt that system, we will have a record of everybody who is born in Ghana. We'll have a record of everybody who has died. So that, for instance, in a particular year, we can go to the births and deaths statistics and look at how many children were born six years ago. And we know that children go to primary one at six years old. So we can for forecast ahead 
that this number of children are going to be ready for class one. And so we can do all the preparations before the children come to school. Earlier, the former president also met with some residents of Kintampo in the Bono East region during the commissioning of a cassava flour factory built by the MP for the area. He assured that crop processing zones will be established by the NDC to add value to farm produce to create employment opportunities for the youth. The Bema Minister now, your Ministry of Agriculture and Agribusiness. Send a bear, sir, fatting, kitten, 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 kitten. You better take a walk on a hang in there. I program my friend of crop processing zones. Yeah, you can't one district, one factory. You say crop processing zones. And to be a year, dear, be be a beer, banche, and a bro, and a entos, and a mangoes, and a be be a year, dear, be a. Yebesha in Fidia, Yebeti Maya Factory Ketua, Nedia Siho, Na Sa and Yomano, Yadan in the Bibi Papa, Yebeti Media Yebi for Fro. And the crop processing zones, and the agribusiness, they said near Minia Ia Ye. Yebeti Gugana Hagina. He also promised to set up a vocational and technical education center in every district across the country. Ghana had district in BR. You may be a technical vocational education training center. Send a bear. Your mana omen to me and to us. No, you're the umber court vocational training center. Now, I'm on Sunday, Juma, on Peso Musia, say at the Pamo, say headdressing, say fito, say capinto, say masonry, say plumbo, your person, you be a. Na yadino ako na wakosia. Sene baya ono sup eviya na wetimi akoshen nebrase. Now the ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament and also MP for Damongo Adam Mutawakilu says he has superior record of projects in his constituency than his and the MPP government. Speaking at a ceremony to hand over an ambulance to the Busunu Health Center to kickstart his campaign, Mutawakilu boasted of initiating and completing projects to ease the burden on his constituents, even as an opposition member of parliament. According to the member of parliament, he has sunk 12 boreholes, built a school, a computer lab, and provided seven corn mills for women in various communities for the Busunu traditional area alone. Mutawakilu said in the coming weeks, he will be commissioning projects in almost every community as he campaigns. I took a and all these communities are within the traditional area of the Busunu. And therefore, as an open woman parliament, because my the president chair did not win the 2016 election, this is the small I have done. The only communities here that have not picked is Panyanto and Mentas. And by the close of this year, I'll be touching them as well. He said. The donation of the ambulance for the community is to make transporting emergency health cases to the district hospital easier. Some residents who spoke to City News expressed their excitement, saying the ambulance has come at an opportune time. I'm very, very much elated. Very, very much. I cannot express my gratitude to the Honorable MP for the donation he has given us. I'm very, very happy. Yeah, Indeed, we go a long way to help the community. He has furnished it very well and it is going to help us. Emergency cases a lot because usually when a woman is in labor, you have to go and charter a taxi. That will take you 200 Ghana cities. From here to Damago, the nearest hospital. It is 200 Ghana cities in and out. So I think with the initiative he has brought on board, it is going to help us greatly in terms of health. The, the last ambulance the other people provided, looking at it, if you see the inside, what is there, it doesn't look like an ambulance. Because the necessary things that will make it an ambulance 
lags inside it. So looking at the current one, the provided everything is inside. So make me very excited. Now, while some small political parties are complaining of the 100,000 filing fees for by the Electoral Commission, the Great Consolidated Popular Party, GCPP, says they are prepared to pay the amount. Now, the party made known this during its acclamation ceremony of its flag bearer. The Consolidated Popular Party, GCPP, on September 19 held its Sith National Delegates Congress in Accra to elect a flag bearer and new executives to run the affairs of the party. At the Congress, the National Executive Committee elected Dr. Henry Herbert Latte as the chairman and flag bearer for the party. Speaking to the media after the event, Mr. Latte says the party will capitalize on its domestication policy to win votes. It's as much as you can get. We have a message that should go straight to the grassroots. So strong that we'll get as much as they feel that we should get because the, what the, the philosophy of the late and latte of domestication is what is going to save Ghana. So once it gets to the, those of the grassroots and they take it, they'll vote the same. When uh, the NDC had their uh, elections, they put to 400,000. And when they did that, I was worried. I knew the issue was going to go up. So I'm not surprised that they, they went up. But it's not as much as 400,000, is it? Even the NDC came down by 300 and something thousand. It's not as much as 300,000, is it? It's still 100,000. Will you want the EC to reduce it? I cannot force them. If they come with a policy... And Will you welcome that idea? That you should if they come with a policy, we have to go by it. It's as simple as so that. you can pay? I'm not saying that I cannot pay. I say what, when when if they come with a policy, we go by it. If they say pay hundred thousand, you pay hundred thousand. Will it be a good news to you if it is reduced? Yes. Will it be a good news? No, I don't see. Look, even the uh, they've been generous to a point when it comes to the parliamentarians. Was it not ten thousand the last time, and they did not increase that? So if they say we should pay hundred thousand, yes, we will pay hundred thousand. General Secretary for GCPP, Achudazi says. All 275 constituencies across the country will have a factory should the party win the 2020 elections. For us, we believe that it's, we shouldn't just be focusing on, on our districts because, as I said, in our various constituencies, they all have something that is unique about them. And it makes it easy to do small-scale um, setups than looking at large-scale setups because it's about how you invest in the establishing of these uh, factories. For GCPP, what we are saying is that we are, the first thing we are going to do to support this one constituency, one factory, is to set up innovation hubs in each of our schools. So young people in our schools have so much innovation, and sometimes they need the guidance of experts to be able to do whatever innovation that they have. So out of these innovation, the government will support them to establish their factories in their various constituencies. This will be supported by the innovation hubs, which we are going to provide them free Wi-Fi and all the innovation hubs across our schools, especially in our public universities and our technical universities. You're still watching the City Newsroom. When we come back, Three in critical condition after accident on Odumasi Konongo Road. We'll tell you more, don't worry. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil, of the Takradi Takwa Road. Call 0302 94 
0540-1097 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. John, the football part. They say uncle your best man. We guy edition eh, match with you. Maria Munso, a panusi shiano. They say wash your ball. I bet they bush ye ye namma. The birthday you and so football nti. Football season na baby you. Football move football. Could you go TV decoder? We go antenna. Any bossu me back subscription. And your one hundred and nine Ghana cedis pair. Then we go TV plus. Asset it. Go TV. Live it. Love it. Bad plan. The world is impossible without time. Bad plan. Time is endless motion. Make time work for you. Bet Planet. Time to bet. Welcome back. Now, the Awome Fia of the Anglo State, Togbi Sri III, is urging political parties and their followers to guard the nation's peace before, during, and after the December elections. According to him, the country's development can be greatly enhanced if peace in all the regions is not compromised. He spoke at a ceremony organized by the King's Heart, a non governmental organization made up of chiefs and queens, and as well as queen mothers, drawn from all 16 regions of Ghana. Here's a report. Civil society groups, religious organizations and individuals have appealed to Ghanaians to put their lives and freedom first as the country goes into the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. The King's Heart, a non-governmental organization made up of chiefs and queen mothers from the 16 regions of Ghana, has added their voice to this call with a campaign dubbed I Stand for Peace. Addressing chiefs and queen mothers on their role in maintaining peace, the Awumefia of Anglo State, Togbisri III, called on political parties and their followers not to overemphasize the importance of peace before, during, and after the December 7 elections. This is not the only election in our lives. There will be many more elections in the foreseeable future after this one. We therefore entreat all citizens to be tolerant, law-abiding, and peace-loving. The forthcoming general election is about choices, and this can be done in peaceful atmosphere devoid of violence. We appeal to all the various political leaders to impress upon their followers and sympathizes to choose peace in place of violence. Instead of fighting before, during, and after the election, let us congratulate one another for maintaining the peace and sanctity of the motherland. Appreciating the indispensable role played by chiefs in the history and development of Ghana, the founder of the organization, Nana Kum Krampa I, Benkumhene of Inandentra Champim Division, tasked all traditional leaders to be peace ambassadors within their various areas of jurisdiction. What we want to tell the whole world is that we, the chiefs and the queen mothers, we are non-partisan. We want peace. We have only one Ghana. When something happens, there is nowhere we can go. We have only one Ghana that we call our own. That is why we organize this peace campaign. We believe is that we, the chiefs and queen mothers, are not going to put on placards before they know that we are for peace. We are going to their houses. We are making sure that our behaviors, the peace that we are really preaching peace. Because if we, the queen mothers and, and chiefs, are fighting, if we go up there to tell them they should have been, nobody will listen to us. That is why we are going, the king 
queens and the, uh, the king's heart, we the chiefs and queen mothers in that group, we are for peace and we are also our own peace in our own houses. So we are going from house to house to make sure that they have peace in their homes. Now, three persons are in critical condition after four vehicles were involved in an accident at Odumasi on the Accra Kumasi Highway. The victims who were rushed to the Konongo Odumasi Hospital have been referred to the Kovodia Hospital in the Eastern Region. City News' Ashanti Regional Correspondent Hafiz Tijani reports. Three of the vehicles hit each other and one of them crashed with this mini cargo truck which was coming from an opposite direction. Divisional Commander for the Konongo Odumasi Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, DSP Stephen Payabua, narrated the incident to City News. An accident involving four vehicles, one Metro Mass bus, one Sion, one Standard, and then one mini cargo trucks. Three of them, that is the mass, Metro Mass, the Sion, and the Standard were all from Konongo towards Kumasi, whilst the mini cargo truck was from Kumasi towards Accra. And according to eyewitness, the, the Sion bus saw, suddenly saw a motorbike which was lying in the middle of the road. So he stopped to remove the motorbike to pave way for him. Before he realized, another bus, that is the Sion bike, came and hit the back of the vehicle, causing the metro bus to, to hit the, the, the two, both two cars. And whilst the, it happened like that, the metro bus moved forward to also crash with the mini bus. So that caused the accident. My advice to all drivers that use this stretch of the road, that Accra Kumasi road, that they should be very careful, especially as the Christmas and the political activities are getting nearer. They all should be very careful. If you are tired, don't drive. If you are driving, drive according to the, lead, uh, the limited speed. Don't drive above uh, the speed. Or, and then if you are tired, especially, you should stop, tell the passengers you are tired, so they should give you a five minutes to stretch your legs and then you can move on. So that's the most advice I can give them. And especially the actual drivers to the vehicles, some of them give to spare drivers. Some, that, those people caused most of the accidents on our roads. Because he will need to come, go early, come early, so that he also gets his truck money. Some passengers who sustained injuries were rushed to the Konongo Odumasi Government Hospital. About seven of them who sustained minor injuries have been treated and discharged while three are in critical condition. The three, according to health workers, have been referred to the Kofridua Hospital. <laughs> All the mangled vehicles, including this one, have been towed to the Konongo Odumase Divisional Police Command. Police say they have begun investigations into the accident. For City News, Hafiz Tijani reporting. You're still watching City News Ramon City TV. Still ahead. President Akufado begins his tenure in office with a pledge to make Accra the cleanest city. That was in 2017. But with four months to the end of the year, how has government fared? We'll look at that in a bit. Don't go away.
Hello, my brother. It's been a long while. Your house they build. I use the finest materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house. Oh yeah. When the wall started to peel off like banana due to rising down. My brother, that has been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing. Only before the concrete casting. You made that boiler rubber. Oh. My brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used the squid DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for house. And over so many years, the house still did come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Ventigio Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Oshumasi Kwaraswa. Vizqueen DPM, no size. Rigwald Solutions is a wholly owned Ghanaian company that offers multiple engineering solutions for the extractive and petrochemical industries. We manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings. From our factory at Kejebri in Takrade in the western region of Ghana, Rigworld Solutions employs Ghanaians to produce world-class products. With cutting-edge technology, all products are manufactured to ensure the strictest adherence to customer specifications. The threading, cutting, chamfering and stamping of the bars are modeled around the ISO 9001 global standard. Safety is at the heart of every production process at Rigworld Solutions. The world is impossible without time. Time is endless motion. Make time work for you. Bet Planet. Time to bet. We have new addictive series for you on DSTV. A country invaded. Another surrender. What will America do? So much has changed. No, you've changed. Go, go, go! Love a good British drama. World on Fire's intimate portrayal of the effects of wartime on ordinary people may be your next favorite thing to watch. Or catch Stargirl, a stellar series around a teenage superhero who is a shining beacon in the darkest of times. True crime fans, you'll be fascinated by this brilliant federal agent as she dives into the dark criminal underworld. And join some of Power's most controversial characters in this spin-off. Series definitely worth checking out on DSTV. Hey, welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, five months after the Western region recorded its first COVID-19 case, the region now has an intensive care unit for the management of the pandemic. The eight-bed capacity unit fitted with four ventilators was provided to the Ifiankwanta Regional Hospital by GIZ. Now, the medical director of the Ifiankwanta uh, Hospital told City News' Akwesi NMJ that the availability of the unit will end the risky transfer of critical COVID-19 patients outside the western region. The eight-bed capacity intensive care unit for the Ifiankwanta Regional Hospital in Second D was funded by GRG's Governance for Inclusive Development Program. In handing over the unit fitted with German technology costing over 1 million Ghana cities, the GRG's country manager for inclusive development, Rafael Frecken, said the facility was originally built and funded by GIZ at the onset of the Ebola crisis in 2016 but was not used. Hence, it had to be renovated to handle COVID-19 cases. The refurbishment and rehabilitation of this eight-bed intensive care unit for treatment of COVID-19 patients with severe symptoms is one of the priority areas of assistance to the government of Ghana by the governance program. 
I must emphasize that this facility we are handing over today was originally built and funded by GIZ at the onset of the Ebola crisis in 2016. The COVID-19 outbreak made it necessary for, uh, to refurbish and execute additional works that enables the unit to function at the highest medical standards in the um, handling of severe infectious diseases. This eight bed unit boasts of eight stead of the art ventilators and accessories, um, four of which have already been installed and the remaining expected soon. It needs mentioning that at the onset of the pandemic, uh, there were not more than 30 ventilators across all hospitals in Ghana. Hence, you can picture the critical importance of the provision of these eight ventilators for this hospital. Three months supply of consumables for the ventilators, thereafter the hospital assumes uh, responsibility. Hospital waste incinerator for the proper disposal of medical waste thus keeping the community safe from the ill affected of untreated waste. Doctors, nurses, changing room and workstations. A decontamination room where the medical staff can safely be decontaminated um, after attending to the patients. Mr. Frecken also announced the planned construction of a 28-bed isolation unit at the Communicable Disease Unit of the Fian Quanta Hospital. The unit will also be financed by GRS's Governance for Inclusive Development Program. The Western Regional Minister said the facility had become necessary after 14 people died from COVID-19. He was thankful to the German government for the investment made in the unit. Let me express my profound gratitude to the German government working through the German Development Agency, GIZ, for the enormous financial and technical support given to refurbish and equip this facility. I am told that the investment from GIZ alone is in excess of 1 million Ghana cities, excluding the estimated 500,000 Ghana cities expected to be spent on the refurbishment of the 28-bed isolation center at this very hospital. We have unfortunately recorded 14 COVID-related deaths. Thankfully, as I speak now, there is no active COVID case in the Western region. So, yes, I know some of you would have wished that we can remove our mask, but prevention is better than cure. Medical director for the Fian Quanta Hospital, Joseph Kojotambil, said the facility was coming at a time when they did not have any active COVID-19 case. He told City News, the presence of the unit marked the end to the transfer of critical COVID-19 cases from the Western region. Um, in the height of the pandemic, we were crying for a place like this, uh, where we can admit and treat the severest of cases, you know, without, without having to transport them uh, uh, for distances. So this is... Um, a very welcome uh, project and uh, it has come a little bit too late but we know that um, in countries where the pandemic has, has hit there's always a propensity for a second wave um, but then in our speeches also it was made clear that this is not only for COVID-19 that it can be used for with general ICU care, as well as the management of any other severe infectious disease condition. Now, President Akufado began his tenure in office with a pledge to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa by 2020. With four months to the end of the year, the government has packed, actually pegged its performance uh, in the Air Force in regards to that particular promise to 85%. Now, while the country is yet to attain this goal, City News' Naadole Mofat visited some suburbs in the capital city notable for filth and came through with this report. The Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia Dapa, earlier this month stated that the government's intervention to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa by 2020 is 85% complete. But... Some organizations, such as the Coalition of Non-Governmental Organizations in Water and Sanitation, has questioned this rating, just as some residents of Choco. Hmm. 
Um, in fact, you can see for yourself. And uh, it's sad that uh, the president said that it's going to make Accra the cleanest city. And then you see this. When the minister is talking about 80%, maybe he's talking about Accra Central, I don't know. But as for Choco here, you know, what we can, I can say about this place, I will not even give the minister 20, 20 or 10 percent for that. Because this thing has been here, look at this one. And you can see that people are selling along the line. A visit by City News to the Kaneshi Market, a popular market in Accra, revealed that the usual dump site that greets shoppers had been cleared. Unfortunately, a visit to Choco, one of the poorest and said to be one of the dirtiest communities in the capital. The City News team noticed that many of the gutters along the streets were filled with rubbish. Some of the residents attributed this to their irresponsible attitude. So if you can see down here like this, uh, this uh, gutter here like this, uh, people from the down here, they don't have a gutter. So all of them normally, they do come throw the, uh, sometimes, let me say, toilet into this type of these things, and then you don't have even the right to stop them. If you stop them, they will ask you whether, whether is that your house. So it becomes something very serious, so we can't talk about it. So this one is like this, like this over three months now. They also cited inadequate resources as a contributory factor to the insanitary nature of the community. This, they said, was among other things, hampering the realization of Accra as the cleanest city in Africa. Unfortunately, sometimes the youth in this area, Choco, Kolegon, or whatsoever, they will come together, they want to even clean the gutters. They will go to Submetro, they will go there, no tools, no items, nothing. So you one will start asking questions. Does the government really meant what he said that he want to make Accra the cleanest city? Now it's been the aim of government to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Though the Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources, Honorable Cecilia Dapa, has stated that Accra is 85% clean. Residents in Choco have debunked her claim, saying authorities have not provided the needed resources to contribute in making Accra the cleaner city. Reporting for City News, I am Na Adole Morfat. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website for more stories. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video contents from CityTV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch CityTV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Mine is Umaru Sandamado. Thank you for watching.